guys, what's up? It's Carl, and welcome back to another tech bedroom tour. I try to update this series at least once a year to kind of share the tech that I've got in of course, you can see my bedroom. And this will actually be one of the last bedroom tours in this spot because I've been sharing on social, I'm not too sure if many of you know on YouTube, I am planning on moving away from my condo and I'm actually heading to a house. I'll leave a render that my architect is working on. I'm gonna share details as soon as I can, but we're still pretty early on in the design process and we're aiming to move in early 2023, fingers crossed with construction. But anyways, this is the bedroom that you guys are pretty familiar with. And if you didn't know before I moved into my current studio, this is where I created YouTube videos actually for close to three years. But since that move, this place has finally become a functional bedroom. And I share this place with my girlfriend. We're in downtown Toronto. And we are so lucky with the size of this bedroom. It's actually pretty large for a condo size. And maybe we'll start off with the thing that makes a bedroom a bedroom, which is of course the bed. So you see it off behind me, all of the furniture in this bedroom is actually provided by Rove Concepts. And I know when you start looking at their stuff, it's a bit on the pricier end. It's definitely a step up from the Ikea grade, which I used to have when I was in school. But if you can take care of your stuff, if you don't move it around too much, I find that the quality of this stuff is way better than Ikea, which is typically made out of particle board. So the wood is real, it's in a walnut wood finish. My theme here in the bedroom is kind of a white slash walnut, whereas in say my living room, is kind of a darker slash black look. So I find it's really contrasting. It's nice and airy. We've got a ton of natural light with the wraparound windows around here. Of course, having a king size bed would be ideal, but I think for a condo, a queen size is already more than generous. And for that extra space over my right shoulder, there's this small little strip. We're actually getting a Peloton bike delivered early next week. So we hope to kind of place it there, our little at home gym. So we're kind of looking forward to that and kind of back to the bed. There is a tad bit of tech built into the mattress, which I've owned now for close to three and a half years. And it's my favorite mattress that I've tested. I do get some delivered. This isn't sponsored by Lisa, which is the company that makes it, but I find that it's a bit on the firmer end. I personally hate soft and squishy beds, so I think this is the perfect medium. It's of course not too, too hard, not too, too soft. It's kind of in that Goldilocks zone. The hint of orange in the bedroom, which I know you guys are gonna ask about, is just the simple blanket throw on the end. And flanking the bed, we've got the two nightstands once again in that walnut wood finish. And it's funny to kind of compare my girlfriend's to mine. She is way less teched out. Our kind of argument was to reduce the amount of tech in the bedroom. So she actually currently has all of my hand-me-downs for her charger. She has a OnePlus supercharger, simple, minimal, it works, some aromatics, some oils, a few candles, and the book which he's currently reading, Trevor Noah. Good job, cat. At least one of us reads. The only reading I do consists of my Harry Potter audiobooks, which kind of leans over to my side of the bed. So I've got quite a few pieces of tech on my nightstand. I think all are pretty essential. So the first thing I think you have to have is some sort of clock. And I find that the Google Nest Hub kind of fits that perfectly. It gives you a heads up of what time it is. You can set alarms kind of every morning I ask what the weather is. And I've got the Logitech charging mat, which is super handy as it charges three devices at once. It's kind of leading towards the Apple ecosystem. So usually my daily driver, the iPhone 12 Pro Max, that switches between a phone that I'm testing. So for example, the Sony Xperia 1 Mark III. But you can also see my Apple Watch lives there. I don't really wear it as much as I'd like. Maybe when I end up grabbing that Peloton, I can stick it on, but the sports I play like volleyball, like soccer, you can't really wear them. And when I'm at the gym, it's just, Ah, I just, yeah, I'm not really on the Apple Watch game yet. I know so many people swear by closing their rings. I am just not on board yet, which is something I should probably work on. And you can also see my AirPods Pro Maxes that also sit on the charging mat so I can charge all three devices at once, like I mentioned. And that's kind of our bed setup and the newest addition to our family, Link. He's actually in daycare today, so he's not part of this video. I'll try to sneak some B-roll clips of him. His little bed or cage is off to this side. So initially we kind of raised him as a puppy in a cage and we still keep it in our bedroom, but it's kind of optional for him. He kind of sleeps on the carpet beside us sometimes. If he's feeling super tired, he kind of just goes into his cage on his own. So it's kind of open, sits off to the side and we've just kind of covered it in another blanket. It's his little home slot den. So that's our bed setups and we'll kind of switch to this side 
of the bedroom now. And this is where we kind of go back and forth on having a TV in the bedroom. We love the idea of just being able to cuddle up and watch a show. But to be honest, all the TV we watch is usually in the bedroom. And I've kind of switched on my ideas of having a bedroom in the TV. Sometimes I have one, I remove it. Now we're kind of back to having another one here. So this is the 65 inch C1 OLED from LG. OLEDs by far have the best picture quality. They've got the best blacks, the best contrast ratios. Super handy as we're right up against all of this natural light and all these windows. Truth be told, we don't and I say we, me and my girlfriend, don't watch anything on this TV. Maybe when she leaves her work a bit earlier one day, I might play half an hour of Mass Effect or half an hour of video games on this before I start my day. I've been crushing the new Legendary Edition. Mass Effect is one of those games that I grew up playing in university, and I love that they've remastered it in 4K. Such a good game. If you haven't played, I would still rank that in the top five of all time video game series. Easy. I love these TVs so much. I know that they're pricey, but if you can afford to get into the OLED game, I only have good things to say. I'm obviously super lucky LG has sent me a couple. So I've got one here in the bedroom. I've got one in my studio and I'm actually planning on replacing my 100 inch laser TV for an 83 inch or is it their 87? So I'm technically downgrading in size, but like I said, the picture quality of an OLED is just so good. It's just hard to escape. Console wise, I kind of played it to the theme of the room. So I am using the Xbox Series S. I think it's the perfect console as long as you're playing on a TV. The Series X is more expensive and unless you have a dedicated gaming monitor, you can't kind of take advantage of the full frame rates. So for the bedroom, I think it's perfect for I think a main console. I still think it's the best option and the best value. We've also got this cool little reading lamp off to the side. Not really techy, but I did end up changing the light bulb to a Philips Hue one. So now I can change the color, the temperature of the light, perhaps set the mood for the bedroom or set the mood for when I'm gaming. <laughs> and of course, all of this stuff is sitting on a Rogue Concepts TV console, once again, in that same white slash walnut wood combo. So off to, I guess, this area of the bedroom, there isn't too much tech. This is actually where the lights microphone stand used to be as part of my old studio. Now it is replaced by a clothes drawer, dresser. We've got a couple candles that live there and we've got a Bluetooth speaker. We're using the Nest Audio. It's simple, it's affordable. I love that Google has kept it underneath that $100 mark. It works with the rest of all of our Google Home tech and the best part when you're in bed listening to music, you can always ask Google to kind of stop playing it. Before I forget, we do have a Nest thermostat and we're pretty lucky in this condo we can control the temperature solely in the bedroom versus what's in the living room. Uh, further on this dresser, as I actually receive all of the tech here versus at my studio, I actually get to test out all the little goodies, kind of set them up before I bring them to my studio. So I'm currently testing out the Sony ZV-E10. This is Sony's latest mirrorless camera and it comes in at $699 and it's marketed towards a vlogger or content creator. So you can see it's got the flip out screen. It's got an APS-C size sensor and I've got the 10 to 18 mil lens on it now. So this is literally the perfect vlogging setup. It's got a dedicated camera button, shoots in 4K with 6K oversampling. It's got HLG, you can shoot an S-Log3. It has all of the video features that you would need and more so for a basic content creator. And I think the price is just what is so attractive of this. You've even got an onboard mic, so you don't need to buy an external one. And actually for all of the B-roll footage for this video was actually shot on the ZV E10, just for your reference. Another new tech addition that has kind of come into the bedroom and I guess condo in general, a vacuum or a smart vacuum. Maybe when you get up to my age, you'll start caring about these things. This is the Dyson V15 Cyclone. I never thought I would rave about having a smart vacuum. Once again, one of those pieces of tech that are extremely expensive, but once you've used one, you never want to switch back to a normal vacuum again. They've got interchangeable cleaning heads. This one actually has a little screen to tell you what's going on with the vacuum. And this one actually has a little indicator laser to show you where dirt might be hidden. I wouldn't go as far as saying as I enjoy cleaning or enjoy vacuuming, but uh, this makes it more bearable. And like I said, this is kind of the Lamborghinis of the vacuum game.
that is pretty much our bedroom setup. And we're actually pretty lucky. This bedroom continues off into a small little hallway. We've got a ton of closet space. We've also got a small little walk-in closet that's mostly filled with my addictions of Nike clothes. And we actually have our master washroom at the very end. There's actually two pieces of artwork, which I personally put up. We've got my Majora's Mask painting, which I made on Illustrator, just printed that out and that lives on the wall. That was my favorite video game, I think, of all time. So cannot wait for the remastered version on the Switch whenever that comes. And we also have a photo of my parents' place in the south of France where they spend most of their winters. Beautiful place right on the water and you can actually see Monaco in the distance as a little reference of where it is. And hopefully now that COVID numbers are kind of slowly going down, kind of depending on where you live, I'm hoping that we can visit by the end of the year, maybe sometime early next year. I know traveling has just been out the window for the past two years, but um, that is sadly what it is. But back to the tech, there's actually two pieces that I use in the washroom. I actually brought them over because how weird would that be to review tech in the washroom? But the first one, which is our video sponsor for today, is the Philips Sonicare 9900 Prestige Toothbrush. So this is the latest smart toothbrush that I've been using and it's just been awesome. So you can kind of see the overall design aesthetic. It's super minimal. It looks way more elegant than all of the other smart toothbrushes that I've used in the past. It's got a simple Qi wireless charging station. And thankfully what makes this a bit different, you can do offline brushing. So you don't have to have the app necessarily open side by side your toothbrush every time. So you can also download the Sonicare app. And if you really want to get in depth and even a bit geeky into how you brush your teeth, you can leverage AI to improve your brush game. So you can see in mine, I really need to improve on cleaning the insides of my teeth. It's an area, I guess, for improvement. It also comes with this really elegant and simple charging carrying case or travel case. So once that travel does pick up again, this will kind of fit into my tech travel pack. So definitely recommended for a smart toothbrush. And the last piece of tech in the washroom, surprisingly people have asked about this. This is my smart scale from Nokia. Not that I actively weigh myself much, even though I would say weight and probably BMI aren't the best indicators at overall health. Say you put on muscle that weighs heavier than fat. It isn't really shown in the scale, but it's a good kind of reference point for yourself. Weighing yourself every day isn't a healthy habit, just like tracking your calories on a smartwatch isn't the healthiest, but it's it's just an overall indicator. So if you guys are interested, I leave this linked. Of course, everything else that we saw in my bedroom setup will be linked down below in the description. And I also know most of you have asked why I no longer have a computer in the bedroom and that's solely to keep tech and working outside of this place. This area is kind of meant to relax, kind of meant to decompress. I do think it's pretty important to separate your personal life from your work life, but if there are any of those nights where I do need to crunch and edit late night, I'm in the doghouse. Not Link's doghouse, but the other bedroom, and that's maybe where I'll stick to my editing. <laughs> Anyways, that is kind of my bedroom tech setup. Curious what you guys think. Let me know if you've got any recommendations down below in the comments. And remember, this will be one of the last we'll probably get this year and the next year before we've got our new house to look forward to. I hope you guys enjoyed the series and maybe took some useful tips, tricks, or recommendations for your own bedroom. And I'll catch the rest of you in one of my next episodes. Peace.